So we would like to take a look at the, the classless address. Uh, so, uh, okay, so we need to have four because we're going to have the mask slash n, the network address, so we'll have one more. The next hop address and the interface. All right, the same thing. We have the packet. The first thing what we will have, extract the destination address. All right. So next hop address and interface number. We search the table. We get we, we send it to the ARP. The ARP job is to get you the physical address. And then you forward the packet. Okay. So um, so make a routing table for router R1 using the configuration in uh, the figure 613. Okay. So in here, this is 613. Let's take a look at this network again. All right. All right, so in this network, what we have, we have like one router which has four interfaces connecting four networks, and and there's another router that connects to the internet. So that should be the default router. You agree? All right, so this is like class B. B? Is class B. Class B, right? No, uh... Yeah, B. Class B, but does it make any difference? No, because now we are, we are using classless. We are using yes. classless, right? So what matters yeah. now is the slash, right? That's so that's, that's a class. Uh, that's, you know, slash 25. That's a slash 22. I mean, originally it's a class C, but now we are using slash 22. This originally is a class B, but we're using slash 25. This originally class B, but using 24, right? All right. And then here, 80, again, this is a class B, supposedly, but we're using 26. Does it make a difference what a class, right? So how to build the table in here? Very simple. Slash 26, that's the network address. The next hop, there's no next hop because directly connected. And M2, same thing, M2, same thing. M3, same thing, M1, and then at the end, always we'll have the default, right? So what do you notice in here? We start with the higher numbers, slash 26. We did not order them M0, M1, M2, or by in here. Okay, by the, the higher number, 26, 25, 24, 22, all right? And then the default network, right? That's what we see in here, right? So that will even will make it much more easier for searching for the right. So you don't want to go, I mean, this table, it could have like like 100 lines. So if you're going to search for it, okay, uh, you know, um, all the way, it's going to take you forever. So you arrange them as from the highest to the lowest, from the highest means from the smallest network, right, to to the uh, lowest, all right? All right, so, um, um, all right, so that's what we did in, in here, okay? All right, so let's take a, let's take example uh, uh, in here. Show the forwarding process if the packet arrives at R1. Where is R1? R1 in here. Packet arrived, okay? Arrived to R1. In the uh, in that figure with a destination address, the destination address is what here that's a destination address 180, 70, 65. All right, so let's take a look at the table 180, 70, 65. Here you go. So there's two in here 180, 70, 65, and there is in here 180, 70, 65. How would they know it's like this class or this class? Is it going to gonna go to M2 or M0? Alright. So how we do it, the router performs the following steps. The first is the first mask is 26, right? In the table, if you take a look in the table, the first mask is 26, right? Alright. Is applied to the destination. So you apply this mask to the destination address. The result when you do the end operation will give you this 180 70 65 20, 28 which does not match the corresponding network address okay you're not find it in the table 
Do you see it in the table? Okay. Okay, 180, 70, 65, 28. Okay. Which does not match the corresponding network address. Um, all right. So the second mask is a 25. The 25, the mask of 25. All right is applied to the destination address which is in here the result is uh, the result is this by the way this is mistake uh, this is it should be something else in here 26 this is 180 70 65 128 uh, yeah I think this should be different number Okay, this one ninety two, right? What? One ninety two. Yeah, one nine one ninety two. But but you know uh, uh, the result should be different than this because they can't be the same. They can't be the same. Try it out, right? So yeah. this is something else. Okay. Now this matches when you take a look in here. So there's a problem in the problem. So it matches this one. Twenty five matches this one. Then you know the destination has to go through what? M0, M0. So which matches the corresponding network? The next hop will be, okay, M0, which is in here, the, um, the M0. Then you try to get the ARP for the M0 and you forward it there. This is it should be different, different, uh, different the number. It, All right. It's written in the table 192, Professor, if you look at it. Here? No, in the table, again, it's, it's written 192. Yeah, but, but it did not match. I mean, it did not match any of that. It, it, it will not be 192. It will, be, it will be a different number. So do it at home. Okay, 26, that means how much? It will be 255, 255, 255, 192. Do end with this. It will give you something different in here. It will give you something which is not in the table. If it matches 192, then there is no issue. Then the route would be to M2, right? It's something different. All right, you got it? Yeah, let's, I got it. let's take a look at the other example. Show the forwarding process. If the packet arrives at R1 with destination address is this one. The same process. So the process the process is very simple. You go to the label. Then we, we're going to end it with this submit mask. If we get this... In here then it's m2 if we don't get this then we try the 25 okay if we get this then we send it to m1 if it does not get this then we try the slash 24 if it gets this then forward it to m3 if it does not get this then we try it with slash 22 if it gets this then we forward it to m1 if it does not get this, then we forward it anyways to where? To the default. To the default network. As simple as that. Makes sense? It's so very logical, right? So that's what we did in here. They started with a 26, right? All right. Apply to the destination address. The result was this. 201422. Okay. Do you see it anywhere in the table in here? No. It's not anywhere in the uh, table. So this is 201422. Let's check again. 201420. 201, uh, where is it? 220, which does not match. It's, uh, which does not match uh, the corresponding network. I, uh, uh, um, in the row two. Okay. With okay. It's okay. Just a second. 26. It gave you this. Okay. 26. It gave you the six. And 26 is supposed to give you what? 26 is supposed to give you this. But did not give you this, right? Then you try it with a 25 until you... I'm, I'm sorry. But with a 26 gave you this. Okay. Oh, which does not match row one. Then a 25 gave you that. Which does not match in the row two. All right. And then you tried it with a 24. Okay. And it gave you this, which matches with the 24. Sorry, let me highlight it first. And here, and the 24. Let me go back. And the 24. When you did it with 24, 
it gave you 201422, then you forward it to interface 3. All right? So it's like sequential process. There is no intellect, intel, big intellect there. Just you have to know the sequence. Then another example in here, you're receiving this. Okay, you're receiving this. Okay, so what you do this time, the masks are applied to the destination address, but no match network address found. Absolutely, there is no one is matching. So what you do in this case? You send it through the default router. All right? Very, very simple. Very, very simple. So let's take a look at this example. Now let us give a different type of example. Can we find the configuration of the router if we know only the routing table? Okay, if you know only the route, somebody gave you the routing table. Could you know the configuration of the routing table? Okay, um, the routing table for the router one is given in, you know, in, in there. Could you know? All right, so this is a routing table for uh, routing table for here. You are giving this routing table. Okay, so what does this routing table tell you? It tells you that how many routes you have out there. One, two, three, four, five, and then the default. Could you now go from this table and draw figure similar to this? Yes, usually, right? All right, easily. I mean, there is nothing. So you, you will be able to do that. So take a look in here. Okay. So in here, you this is R1. You start with R1. So how many interfaces in the R1 in here? How many interfaces? How many, how many direct interfaces? Three. Three. Because in here, there is no value. That means direct. You see how we draw it? There are three interfaces. What are the three interfaces? M0, M1, M2. Simple. Okay, how many indirect interfaces we have? Two. All right. Okay, and this is default. It's telling you it's default, right? So, to, so that means, what does it mean? There is a router, there is a router between the R1 and this. And because they are different values, that means we have two routers, other two routers. And that's what we did. We put router two and router three, right? And then in here it tells you the network, right? In, in, in the network is 134.80, 134.80, right? And in here it tells you 140.6.12.64 for the third router. <coughs> you could put this here or here, it doesn't make a difference. You could call this R2 or 3 or this R2 or 3. Okay, from the table, you are able to draw the network. You agree? And then there is a default network. Okay, there is a default network. All right. So why uh, why the default network is uh, you know uh, uh, how how do you know that it has to be connected through here not here because in the table what does it say it's M zero through M zero so there is a direct connect to M zero also through M zero so it's clearly that you know m0 there okay and then it's it, it it's it has to be connected to this switch not this switch where it has m2 or this switch where it has m1 it has to be in here so this one we knew it has to be connected to this one not this one or not this one because because the m0 it tells you it will go through the m0 in here right all right so now i know the four routers i know what is the subnet in each one of these all right okay subnet and now i need to know the assigned ip address so in here for example in the m1 in the m1 okay well okay, come on in the m1 in here it tells you the network address will be 190 17 Zero. This in, in, uh, the, I'm sorry. In the M1 in here, it tells you the next hop is 190.17.6262. So right away, I know the assigned IP address in here, 190.17.6.2. All right. Also, in here, it tells me the next hop is 180.14.2.5. You agree? 
and then I know the, the assigned IP address in here 150.14.2.5 simple logic all right okay in here it tells you the next hop for the the default is 110.74.6 that means it's it's in here 110.74.6 so I could go from this to this or I could go from the table to the diagram all right if you truly understand how the system is built it's a piece of cake to go from one direction to another you agree all right so all right and then after that we have something called address aggregation address aggregation right so what is address aggregation anybody could guess what is address aggregation So in here, for example, as you see, let's take a look at it together. So how many routers we have? Two. Oh, two. Two. Each router will have a table. This is let's just start from R2, right? So R2, um, yeah, uh, R2 in here times M0 and M1 is connected to networks. So if it's a slash 24, Okay, in the next address, the next address will be 140.24.7.0. All right, so it will be anywhere in here. All right, so in here, a class C or class B and divided in how many subnets? Four. Instead of 24, is like 26 divided in four. So if you aggregate all of these, it will be 140.24.7.0. slash 24. The whole networking, if I draw a box in here and this, in here it will be 140.24.7.0. slash 24. When I divided it into four subnets, it became slash 26, slash 26, slash 26, slash 26. So this router should not worry about which subnet it's gonna go to the job of this router only to send it to where to this router then this router will worry about where it has to to go all right so what we call this we call this is address aggregation so what we did in here we did address aggregation we could, by the way, instead of doing it like this, we could include all of these four 26, uh, slash 26 in here and remove the slash 24. So the slash 24 equals to all these four 26. So the router in here does not need to think where it's going to go. It just has to know that I have to send it to router 1. So whenever address is 148.24.7.0, send it to where? through M0 to router 1. Otherwise, default gateway. Now in here, I did not do address aggregation because I need to know specifically where to go. Is it going to organization 1 or 2 or 3 or 4? All right. So again, what is address aggregation? And instead of having all of these networks in this table, we aggregated them. We made them one network. All right. Again, understanding the classes, the classful, the classless, understanding the subnetting. Okay, okay. So in here, in here, subnetting. In here, we kind, we did, we kind of did supernetting, subnetting and supernetting. Aggregation means like supernetting, right? Okay. Subnetting is dividing one network in four. Supernetting combining four networks in one, and that's what we did in here. So you really need to have a deep understanding, deep, deep understanding of, okay, um, uh, deep understanding of, uh, okay. And notes in here, that's a simple case because they are equal, equal uh, subnet, right? Professor? Yes. Is the action here is like a bridge because there is a switch aggregate acts like a bridge? Uh, which one is acting as a bridge? I mean the last one here. The R2 or R1 or what? R1. R1 R1 is not a bridge. It's a router. Okay, it's a router. Okay. Uh, uh, 
router but you know um, uh, it's it's the map all right so let me let me give you example let me give you example okay so in here in in here okay so uh, let's say this is like coming from new york right and this is going to connecticut all right so we're coming from new york to connecticut okay from new york there is only one uh, route which is 90 uh, 95 you go to Connecticut, there is 15 and uh, 91 and 84 or whatever. All right, so what we are saying, okay, instead of saying that send this packet to 95 or sending the packet to 84 or sending this packet to 15 or sending this packet to 8, we said just send it to Connecticut. Okay, to Connecticut. So we combined all of these highways in one highway and we gave it the name Connecticut. All right, so that's what we did. So now in here, if you are, you are going anywhere from 140.24.7.0 slash 24, just send it through M0 to R1. All right, you don't need to know the details. You don't need to know which path further. Who will decide once the packet comes to R1 the R1 needs to look at this table and then this, you know, send the data in the right path. So there is no bridge in here. All right. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So uh, longest mask matching. So in here, uh, uh, as you see in here, in this network. So in here, this is 26, 26. That's fine. So there's three networks and there is in here R2. Okay, and the routing for R2, so slash 26, all right, 140, 24, 7, 192, and then 24, 140, 24, 7, 0, and then whatever in here, okay, and then the default router, all right. So, um, so what is happening in here, um, what happens if, you know, uh, one organizations in the previous figure you uh, uh, is not uh, geographically close to the other to, to the three okay yeah, you know it's like 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 you know like for example in here organization four okay is completely far from organization one two and three so in here you have they are very close to each other but this one is uh, too far okay it's like too uh, too far all right so uh, that means like organization four as you see it in here can could not uh, um, you know cannot be connected to router one we cannot connect it to the router one we cannot move this in here it's too far geographically okay so could we still use aggregation and assign a block like 140.24.7.92 uh, all right to the organization for of course the answer is yes because routing is a classless address this here is a classless address and uses principle longest mask matching the principle of longest uh, mask uh, matching so this principle states that the routing table is sorted from the longest mask, sorted from the longest mask, as you see 26, 24, all the way down, to the shortest mask. That means if there are three masks, like 27 and 26 and 24, the mask 27 must be first entry and 24 must be the last so all we start with the longest mask all right so if we take a look at this situation and organization seven is separated from the other three organization as you see it in here all right so suppose right now you see 20 20 in here the 26 is separated from this right all right, so suppose the packet arrives for organization four with a destination address, uh, let's say 140, 140, 24, 7, 200. It's arriving to this one in here, too. Okay, 
So the first mask at the router 2, as you see it in the router 2, okay, is applied. What is the first mask? 26, because it's the longest, right? Which gives a network address of 140.24.7.192. It will give this, all right? So the packet is routed correctly from interface M1, M M1, and reaches the organization form. There is no problem, all right? All right, so the idea here, longest mask first. Okay, we have the longest mask first. The longest mask here at 26, it will be, uh, it will be applied, uh, it will be applied uh, first. All right, so this is the table for R1. So how many connections we have? 26, this one. And then we have this one, and we have this one, all of them slash 26. And this is uh, the router 2 will have the 26. Okay, so the first it will try this, and then we aggregate all of these three in a 24. Okay, and so on and so forth. So, as an example, for okay, so what am I? Okay, this is hierarchical routing with uh, uh, internet service provider. So in here, for example, okay, so in here, in here, like a small internet service provider one, okay, it has, uh, you know, uh, multiple subnet, then the aggregated in here. So in here, slash 30, all slash 30, that means how many networks we're going to have in here. Or each network, how many IPs will have? Four, right? Right? Because two to the power two, the remaining four, right? So each network in here has four IP addresses. They will be aggregated in here. And this is slash 23, right? So the total is 512 because two to the power how much? nine give you total 512 so if you aggregated all the networks in here it will give you total of 512 if you aggregated all the ips from this networks will give you 512 if you aggregate this and this uh, and you know um you know uh and this is now it's like slash 20 so that means we're gonna have how many we're gonna have total 4096 uh, no uh, IP addresses. So four, 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 four. Now each one of these, like five, twelve, five, twelve, five, twelve, five, twelve. You add them together, will give you forty ninety six IP addresses. So this will provide forty nine, uh, like four K, four K, four K, four K. If you add them up, will it provide you with a total sixteen thousand three hundred eighty four. Okay, and and will be connected to the internet. So this is like regional internet service provider. This is the local internet service provider, another local internet service provider. These are small and so on and so forth. So this is, we call it hierarchical routing with ISPs, okay? So as an example in the hierarchical routing, let us consider figure 617, which is in here. The regional ISP, all right? is granted 16,384 addresses starting from this IP address all right the regional IP address has dedicated to divide this block into four sub blocks four sub blocks each with 4096 IP addresses three of these sub blocks are assigned to three local ISPs, all right, and the second sub block is reserved for further fuse. Note that the mask for each block is slash 20, and that's what to explain. So, in here again, think about houses. So, like you know, in here, each small company or house have like four IP addresses in each one of these, they will be aggregated to, uh, to a local uh, uh, ISP in here. It's like bigger. So in here, in this one, 
uh, we don't have a small ISPs, they can make it to the local ISPs. However, the total will be 4096. Same thing in here, same thing in here, and will be uh, connected there. And that's, that's how, is it, how is it in the real uh, life, right? So in here, so, um, uh, so, um, all right, so I think that's, that's, you know, um, I, I hope it's clear, okay? So, um, in, uh, then we have in here, uh, forwarding based on destination address. All right, so, uh, let's, okay, so, um, uh, sh uh, this figure in here it shows a simple example of searching in the routing table using the longest match algorithm. Okay, and you already explained what is longest match. Al okay, match algorithm. So although there are some more efficient algorithms today, the principle is the same. When the forwarding algorithm gets a destination address, all right. On the packet, it will receive a packet. You're going to look into the packet. You're going to get the destination address. You don't care about the sort address. You're going to get the destination address from the packet. Then after that, you need to check the mask. What is the mask? Okay. Um, um, so you start, you look for the mask, the slash, and then you, um, 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 uh, then you try, then you try to check which entry in the table to find the match. All right. Then after you find the match, you'll try to find the... So in here, for example, okay, that's the order. So mask slash n, we start with the longest max, 32. That means one IP address, 32, how many... In If the slash, if the slash 32, how many IP addresses we have? One, right? So these kind of fixed paths, right? Three, 32, then in 31. In 31, how many IP addresses we have? Two, okay, and 30, 29, all the way down. So look in here. You have a destination address. This is the destination address. I'm writing here destination address. The destination address has two parts. The first part is the network address, and the second part is the host address. From the, from the, from the network address, I will be able to know what is the slash. All right, then from the slash, I'll try to read what is the network address. Then I will know what is the next hop address. Then I will know what is the interface. So, for example, in here, okay, X is 30. X is 30. So it goes in here. It did not take 32 or 32 or 31 or 31 or 31 or 31. It came to 30. Okay. Then the network address is F. The network address is F. All right. The net, the, so F, so, uh, so F means found, F means found, this is not found, not found, not found, not found, it means found, then the next hop address is Y, the next hop address is Y, and the interface 2, so this is the interface 2, we'll send it in here, and will change the destination, uh, will change, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, it will put the next hop address in here and will send the packet. We'll send the packet out. All right. So that's what it is. All right. Okay. And that's the traditional way. That's the legend way. That's how it is in the legend way. So in the figure, uh, uh, 619 in here for wording based on the label. So in here, it's based on the destination address, right? You look at the destination address. In the label in here, okay, for wording, um, uh, in, um, uh, and this now we are talking about the MPLS, okay? All right. Uh, so in here, uh, in, in the figure in here, what we see in here is, is a simple example using label to access the switching table. So we have a label. You see the label in here? Label used as an index. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, 2. This is the label, right? So in here, 
we were checking the network address. In the in 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 the modern way, is we attach a label to the packet. All right. So this is like the destination address. And instead of looking at the network address, the IP address, and the destination address, we look at the label. So it says, look for the label 0004. This is the label 0004. It tells me, send it out in interface 2. So we're going to go to interface 2. And it says the next label will be 0012. That's 0012. Then this will go to the same thing in here and we'll look for this label in the next round, in the next label. So this is based on the label. So since the labels used as index to the table, finding the information in the table is immediate. So now we don't look for the slash, we look for the label. We include the label on the, the packet. All right, so... Um, so in 1980s, several vendors created routers that implemented something called switching technology. Switching technology. Okay, and this um, um, uh, um, the standard they call it MPLS. MPLS. All right, MPLS, and MPLS is is for multi protocol label switching. So instead of switching based on the IP address, now we add a label. So very simple, look in here. This is the IP header, this is the IP payload, and we add another header, which is the MPLS header. The source IP address in here, the destination IP address in here, we are not going to use it. We're going to add MPLS header. Okay. MPLS header. And this standard is conventional routers in the internet uh, can be replaced by MPLC routers. Okay. That can behave like a router and a switch. All right. So that's what we call them routing a switch. So these are like a routing a switch. All right. So instead of using, again, the destination IP address router, we're using label switches, label the switches, all right, MPLS, all right. So in here, the, the problem, we added a new header, right? We added a new header. So MPLS header made of a stack of labels, okay, stack of labels. So you have... You know, you have label, you have uh, 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 TTL. So let's take a look at the 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 the, the label. Okay, so to simulate connection oriented, and that's what you're trying to do, to move from connectionless oriented IP protocol to connection oriented protocol. All right. So the first thing that is needed is to add a field to the packet that carry the label, the, the, the label. So we added a field. That's the field we added, okay? Uh, the IP4 packet format does not allow this extension. So the IP does not allow it, okay? So in IP6, yes, it's easy, but IP4 does not allow it. So what is the solution for this to use it in IP, in, on IP4, okay? So um, uh, we created a layer between the data link layer and the network layer. We added another layer. So remember that we have physical layer, then we have data link layer, then we have a network layer, right? So we created a sub layer between the data link layer and the network layer. And the whole IP packet encapsulated as a payload in the MPLS packet. So we kind of added a sub-layer between the data link and between the network and the network layer. All right. All right. So all right. So the MPLS header is actually a stack of subheaders. So a stack of subheaders, as you see in here, um, that is used to uh, for multi-level hierarchical switching. All right. Um, 
so um, um, uh, as you see in here in this figure okay you um, uh, um, um, uh, MPLS header in its switch um, and there a subheader is a 32 bit um, th you know it's like 32 bit um, or five four, four bytes long all right uh, so the label so what are the content let's take a look at the contents the first thing is a label and it's a 20 bit this label from 0 to 19 which is 20 bit uh, field defines the label that is used to index the routing in the table so this is the label that will use it for index like in here you see it in here okay that's for index okay what else then we have the X, uh, exp uh, which is three bits these are three bits and this reserved for experimental purpose there is no use for them right now all right so we have the label okay and then then the s okay it's only one bit and um, um, and defines the situation of the header in the stack so when it's one when the value is one that means the header is the last one in the stack so this one, the last one, S will be what? One. And here will be zero, 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 zero. Until you see one, then you know it's the last one in the stack. Then we have eight bits for the TTL. All right. Um, all right. What is TTL? We learned it before, right? Everybody knows that, right? So this every t it's time to live. Okay, time to live. So every time, each uh, each time you visit the router, it visits the router, it will be decremented. Okay, when it reaches zero, the packet will be dropped. Remember in the TTL, there is 15. When it go to the next hop, it will become 14, then 13. It's supposed to reach out to the destination before this becomes zero. If it becomes zero, the packet will be dropped. And why we do that? Because we need to eliminate the number of lost packets or stray bucket, buckets that will cause congestion, right? In the network will cause uh, congestion. All right. All right. So that's it. That's it. I mean, that's what is the, the label switching. So the switching either based on the label or based in the destination. Let's quickly take a look at the structure of the router itself. So we, we spoke about the router. Okay, what is a router? It's a forwarding device. Okay, it's for forwarding and for routing. That's what is router. And it was represented in a black box mostly, right? I think black box. Is it black box? Or red box in here? Whatever, that's a router, right? So it's like a hidden box for us, right? So they're represented by a box. Okay, um, uh, and it will accept incoming packets from one of the input ports, the interfaces, and routes it out. So there is M incoming packets, all right, uh, uh, and, and and it will forward. So what is a router? Is a store forward, store forward, right? There is coming from one direction, going from the one uh, direction, all right. So, um, uh, what are the components? Let's just discuss what are the components. Let's take out the router from inside. This is the router. All right. So, you will have ports M1, M0. This is the input port, right? M1, M port 1, port 2, port N. And there is output ports port 1, port 2, port N. Inside it in here, it will have the routing processor. All right, routing processor, right? It's, it's like a computer. By the way, your laptop, your computer, your PC, you could you could convert it to a router. Okay, you could make your computer as a router. All right. The only thing that in your computer you have to have two network cards. If you have two network cards, then you could make it as a router. So you have a, a routing processor which routing process the tables and uh, a switching uh, table. So very simple. So we could say there is input ports. Output ports, routing routing processor, and switching fabric. All right, all right. So this will show the schematic. So the input port, 
you will have a physical layer pressure, then data link layer pressure. How many layers? For, anyways, how many layers we have in the router? Three. Three, right? Physical data link and the network layer. So the input port, physical layer, data link layer, then it's going to go, the data will go in a queue. And then we'll queued in and then queued out. It will queued out. So the input port perform the physical and data link layer functions of the router. The bits are constructed from a received signal. There's a signal received. The packet is decapsulated from the frame. And errors are detected and corrected. As simple as this. The packet is ready to be forwarded by the network layer, which is in here, the network layer. Okay. In addition to the physical layer processor and the data link processor, the input port has puffer or a queue. All right. And that will hold the packet before they are directed to the switching fabric. So the main thing is in here, the switching fabric. Okay, before we talk about the switching fabric, let's talk about the output ports. Okay, what are the output ports, right? All right. So uh, um, they, they reverse the order. Okay, they reverse the order. So the first, the, up, uh, the, outping, out, uh, the output, the packets, you know, they are queued and encapsulated in a frame. So you receive a frame. You're going to send a frame, and um, it will be sent out. So let's take a look at the uh, here. Okay, that's outboard. So, okay, you see it's re reserved, uh, reversed, right? Okay, so this is the queue, the data link processor, and the physical layer. All right? Remember that when we're explaining the router, the data goes up, then down. So they have to go through the three layers, the queue, the data link layer, and the uh, physical layer. Then after that, we have uh, the routing the processor, okay? Uh, what does the routing processor? It, it, you know, it's a processor. It's, it, 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 you know, performs the functions of the network layer. So the destination address is used to find the address of the next hop. Takes the IP address. Find the next hop address, all right? And the output number from which the packages will be sent. And the whole activity, this activity, is sometimes referred to as table lookup. So what does the processor do? Table lookup. Okay, the processor in here, it does a table lookup. All right? So get the IP address, find the destination, look up where, where to send it, what should I do with the data, and then after that, do it. Now we're going to go to the fabric in here, the fabric, uh, the switch fabric. Okay. And it's very simple. Look in here. Switch fabric is like a switch. So if it's coming from input zero and the output has to go three, so this con this dot switch will switch this on. So now zero is connected with what? With a three. Right? Think about this like a switch. If the input is one and the output is zero, so we switch this on. So the data will go all the way uh, there. Okay? And this is what we call it, you know, uh, the switch fabric. Uh, it moves the backers from the input queue to the output queue. That's the function of the switch of fabric. So in here, this we call it a crossbar switch. Crossbar switch, a simple switch, all right? Uh, I mean, this is like a simple switch, but there's other switches much more complicated, like Banyan switch in here. So in here, you have... Uh, you, you have in, you know, connection, so uh, left bit, middle bit, and right bit. Okay, it connects, for example, A1 with B3. Depends on that, and that depends on that bits in here. <coughs> so it's much more realistic than the crossbar switch. All right, and they call it Banyan tree, Banyan tree um, uh, switches. All right. And this will uh, connect, you know, the, uh, you know the, the source with the address. Okay. So, Banyan switch is uh, a multi-stage switch. It's clear it's a multi-stage switch, right? There is a multi-stage switch. With a micro switches um, at each stage that route the packet based on the output port uh, represented as a binary string. So, if you have, for example, N inputs, 
how many inputs in here inputs right and in outputs so how many options we have with the three stages how many options we have n inputs okay Seven. inputs how many oh, okay and three stages it will be uh, log 2n log 28 how many 21 7 no. times 3 well look to 4 that means you have three options right log three option all right right so uh, if n the n goes to so uh, you're going to have okay so if the okay so if we have n inputs and n outputs as you see in here 8 and 8 so we have log 2n, which is log 28 in this case stages. Okay, log 28, how many? Three. So one, two, three stages. <clears throat> Each stage should have n over 2. 8 over 2, which is 4 uh, micro switches. Right? So we have to calculate how many stages and how many micro switches in each stage. Okay? The first stage routes the packet based on the highest order bit uh, of the binary string, the highest. So in here, zero. Okay, what is the value in here? <coughs> and the second stage route the packets based on the second highest route or order bit. All right. right. Because in here we have three bits, right? Two, two, three, three, <coughs> and so on and so forth. All right, so uh, so let's take a look in here. If the input is one, okay, sending to output six. All right, if the input uh, in here, um, so we have eight inputs, like in here, the eight inputs and eight outputs, right? Okay. Okay, the number of stages are three because eight, uh, log two, eight will give you three stages as you see in here, eight. And if we suppose the packet that arrived at input one, the input one in here, and and this must go to output six, so the destination for the output six. So we know it has to go one, two, six, right? So how we write six? one 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 zero right right so look in here it's gonna go output one and it goes in here it has to go output one and when it goes in here it has to go output zero so one one zero get you to six all right get you uh, to six in this example the input five sending to output two how you write two zero one zero Okay, so we know it's coming from one and the map in here. I'm gonna here output zero, and then output one and this output one, and this output zero, and this get you to two. Alright? It gets you to two. Alright? So also you could, uh, there is uh, the batcher, uh, banyan switch, which like have multiple. So this is the banyan switch that we explained before. Yeah, and this like more sophisticated. You have the batcher switch, then you have the trap model module, and then you have the banyan switch. So we we are connecting the batcher switch with the banyan switch with a trap module. We call it batcher banyan um, switch. All right. The problem of using the banyan switch there is a possibility that the internal collision. E, um, uh, even when two packets are not um, uh, heading for the same uh, output port, so you could have a collision. So, like one needs to one needs to collect with six, but you know maybe like like for example, uh, in here six six would like to connect with uh, with two, and there's a collision. So at certain path, the collision, they intersect. So that's a problem. All right. 
so so you could have two packets are not uh, you know could collide so we can solve this problem by uh, sorting the arriving packets based on their destination port so you sort the arriving packets based on their destination port all right um, and it was designed by by patcher ek patcher person um, and they connect them together so this is just a sorter and this then a trap and then it's connected all right and supposedly to solve the, the problem anyways congratulations guys today we spoke about the router how the router work we took a look how the router work from inside right right and um, what else um, you know we understood you know the operation of the routers and how it works exactly so um, in next week we'll have a test but the week after that we'll take a look at the internet protocol version for okay how it works from inside so you are looking at real stuff you're looking how things work deep on the uh, system so that 